I mentioned earlier that there are some cells, such as the goblet cell, that secretes a mucus-type product. But there are also other cells that secrete a serous-type product. And I'll explain what those two types of products really are in a moment. In this slide, you can see two images, two histological sections taken through two different exocrine glands. One is dominated by mucus secreting units. The other is dominated by serous secreting units. And you see here, they stain very differently. In the case of the mucus secreting unit, or mucus secreting cells, the bluey tinge or the light staining is due to the component of the secretory product. Mucus secreting cells or mucus secreting units, we call them acini as well, which I'll explain later on, they secrete proteins that are glycoxylated, glycoxylated with anionic oligosaccharides. And because of that, these proteins, these secretory products are water soluble. So depending on the fixative you use, often these secretory products are lost from the cell. Here, in some way, they've been a little bit retained. On the right hand side, you see serous secreting cells. These are proteins. And if the tissue is being preserved very well, you can see little tiny granules containing these protein secretory products stored in small vesicles at the apex of the cells. Often you'll see the rest of the cell, the rest of the cytoplasm, basophilic, and this reflects the enormous protein factory inside the cell that's making the secretory product. Go back to the mucus secreting unit. The cells there have nuclei that are squashed against the base of the cell, so they appear flattened. The serous secreting cells have nice rounded nuclei, and often that's a good indication or a good way to identify the difference between mucus secreting cells and serous secreting cells. Sometimes a gland can have both secretory units. Here you see a serous secreting unit, very pink staining. Here you see a mucus secreting unit. And here's an example of what I described before, where the secretory product is water soluble and lost during the normal tissue processing we use to examine sections of tissue stained with hematoxylin and eosin. Down below, if you look very carefully, you can see three profiles of a duct system. These ducts, remember, carry the secretion product from the secretory cells to an exterior location. And these locations can be often some distance from where the gland is housed within the body. And we'll see an example of that when we look at the pancreas. It has a long duct that opens into the duodenum some distance away.